Hello, my name is Professor Russell Richman. I am the Associate Chair of Graduate Studies in Building Science in the Department of Architectural Science, which basically means I am the Program Director for the Graduate Program in Building Science. Thank you for taking your time to look at this information session. I posted it on the website because we traditionally offer info nights, once in the fall term and once in January. And we thought this would be a great idea to post sort of an abbreviated version of the info night online so that people who perhaps can't make it to Toronto for, to be here physically for the info night or people that just want some questions answered right away can do it online. The slide deck you're about to see over the next little bit is basically the same slide deck that you would see at info night. There would be some variation from year to year. However, the voiceover is going to be abbreviated. I'm going to try to get through this in the next 15 minutes or so. And basically that means that I strongly urge you to come to an info night if you can, because it's always good to put faces to names and if you have any additional questions and that sort of thing. So without further ado, uh, these next two slides basically showing Toronto in 2005 here and 2014, it just shows the opportunity and the growth. And when I look at these two slides, I see this is the reason people are coming to our grad program. There's work, there's opportunity. Not to mention, we are so blessed with the fact that Ryerson is in the middle of Toronto's downtown core in one of Canada's largest cities, depending on the metric. It's amazing, great opportunity. This is basically our lab. The city is our lab. Toronto needs aspects of durability, flexibility, resiliency, energy efficiency, and it basically aligns perfectly with our program. The idea of building science, uh, it really is in the middle of everything that's in this idea of the industry of the built environment. Depending on what you study, depending on your interest, building science can morph closer to, say, building envelope aspects, structural aspects, mechanical aspects, electrical, acoustic, or anything. But the core of it is right in the middle of it all. It's an amazing discipline that way. In terms of what our program, where it started from, uh, you can read this look here. There's more on our website. At any time, you can pause this video and read the text on each slide. I'm not going to spend time going over the text verbatim on each slide, but it gives you a good idea of where the program came from. In terms of what I like to highlight about the features, uh, it is an amazing interdisciplinary program. The applicants come from various backgrounds and it enriches every new year of students, new cohort of students, and it enriches how they move through the program, how they take to the courses, how they work together. Um, we're very closely tied to industry, which is wonderful. It helps, again, being in, in this great city of ours. The idea of collaboration, it happens in the curriculum, around the curriculum, through research, et cetera, et cetera. We like to show this slide because basically what we did is over the past five to eight years, we've taken job descriptions from our graduates and basically threw it up here. So if you look through, you know, you'll see more traditional aspects of like project management or sustainability or uh, coordinator at a large contracting firm or just building science consultant. And you'll see some, some other things that maybe people didn't think about like cost consultation or specifics in facade management or, you know, designers or that sort of thing. And it just shows you that our graduates are getting employed and they're doing things related to industry. Not everybody is working at a building science consultancy firm. Some people work in government, other people work at nonprofits and that sort of thing. So the opportunity exists. Like I said earlier, the, the core faculty really basically makes our program what it is. Uh, there's nine of us right now and we encourage you to go to our website to look at our backgrounds but basically we all have various differences in expertise and we collaborate amongst each other and there's opportunity for co-supervision and research um, there's also other programs both within Ryerson and at other universities such as U of T or Concordia or Waterloo where we bring in either through research or the odd elective course we bring in other instructors um, in addition to that, some of our elective courses are taught by industry experts as well to bring in and solidify that practical element as well. So most of you are probably wondering, how is this master's structured? Well, essentially, there are 
two options. So there's the one year, 12 month full time MBSC option. You can think of it as a course based option. And then there's the two year MASC. So MASC is Master of Applied Science. It's what we would say is the research based and MBSC is Master of Building Science and it's the course based. So I'll start with the MBSC. So as it says here, it's designed to be completed in 12 months full time and it essentially is eight courses. And to graduate from our graduate program, depending on, doesn't matter which option you take, you need 10 equivalent um, credits. And so in this case, you get five plus three, five core courses and three electives to get eight. And then the remaining two to get to 10 come from the major research project. And then you have to do a, a pass-fail collaborative activity, which I'll discuss briefly at the end of this. So that's our MBSC, one year course based. The MASC, Master of Applied Science, it's the same MASC that you'd get in uh, other engineering schools across Southern Ontario. And it's two years full time, 24 months. And instead of the eight courses over here, you have five courses. You get to choose three of the core and two electives. And then you do an MASC thesis, a research thesis, which is the, the precursor to your traditional PhD route. And then also you do your collaborative activity. So essentially your research base or MASC is two years and your MBSC course base is one year. And you have to tell us when you apply which one you're interested in. In terms of the courses, so I mentioned these core courses. Now here they are here. These are our five core courses. Three of them currently are being taught in the fall term, so September to December, and two of them are being taught in the winter term, so January to April. And you can look on our website for course descriptions and more information on that. But here they are. So when you loop back to the previous slide, uh, if you do the MBSC, you have to take all five. And if you do the MASC, you choose three of those five. And the elective courses, these are uh, selected titles from some of the elective courses. Some of them are taught more regularly than others. For example, currently, uh, building up envelope restoration is taught quite regularly. Uh, energy management is uh, taught quite regularly through the mechanical engineering department. Um, and then others are taught more regularly than some others. But there's a complete list on our website as long as you visit that and go under courses. And there's also course descriptions and whatnot for you to look at. In terms of the research timeline, so there is a research component to both um, degrees, the MBSC and the MASC degree. The research component generally in the one-year course-based MBSC degree is that you're going to really work hard at completing your major research project, or as we call it, your MRP, April to August. And this is a, a focused research activity uh, sometime in the winter term just before April, or even maybe in the fall term if you have everything lined up. You choose your supervisor and you formulate your research questions uh, that, which basically drives your MRP in the winter term and you complete it in the summer. And it really demands 12 months of full time. And the MASC, the two year MASC uh, thesis degree is basically your thesis. If you remember back to the credits back up here, if there's five courses and you need 10 credits. Your MASC thesis basically comprises five credit equivalent. So it's a more comprehensive research thesis as opposed to a major research project. Generally, the second year of your two years here will be focused you know, entirely on your MASC thesis. You want to start it at the same time in sort of the winter term of your first year. And that's what you do in the first two terms. And basically, you can look on the website, but it's data collection, analysis, some lab work, some field work, that sort of stuff. It's related to your faculty supervisor's research, and there's also uh, student funding available for the MASC thesis at times as well. In terms of the opportunities, the research areas, you can read this. These are some examples of collaborations we've had before. These are some examples of research areas. There are a number of examples of both MRPs and MASCs on our website, and I urge you to go there. I'll show you three now, just a quick run through, just to give you an idea. These are all MASC theses. Um, several years ago, uh, Erin Dixon, she was a Queens mechanical engineering graduate. 
she basically did this thing called Gemini House, which is a, a house within a house. And the idea is that you hunker down in Gemini mode and you leave this perimeter at some kind of temperature between 21, 20 comfortable inside and minus 20 outside. So it might be around 0, 5 in this perimeter zone. And the idea is that if this is the perimeter zone, this is your core zone where you're living when you're hunkering down, is that if you have heat losses through this first envelope, you can use a heat pump to gather them and deliver them back here. So you get them back into the core before they are lost forever to the outside. Pretty neat. Aaron was able to show, if you just look at this right side for heating energy use, Aaron was able to show that compared to a traditional house, there was enormous savings for a Gemini house in Gemini mode when you hunker down. And then she also made it relative to a moderate performing house. And this on the left side is total energy. So on the right side, it's just heating energy and total energy. So this takes into account all your plug loads and everything else, lighting, that sort of thing. So there's an example. Somebody else, Ruth McClung, who was also a civil engineering graduate from University of Waterloo, she focused more on cross-laminated timbers. She looked at this material, CLT, you can Google it. And she did several panels and changed certain things and put this uh, in collaboration with the University of Waterloo and put it in the bag hut over there and exposed it to the exterior climate, ran a constant interior climate and pulled out some data, some measured data to figure out what works best, what doesn't. You th see things here, keywords like moisture content and vapor pressure drive and that sort of thing. And it was a, a great contribution to the cross laminated timber industry. A third example here is Mark Flynn, uh, a civil as well from Dalhousie. This is uh, the Evergreen Brickworks in Toronto, pretty much just east of downtown. And you look at that and you go, wow, that's in Toronto. And you go, yeah. And the view back from the brickworks at the top of the hill is looking like that. So we're not too far from the downtown core. And what he did was build a test hut. So this is the test hut in plan. Uh, this is the test hut in section. And this is the wall assembly. And you can look up his thesis and get more detail on it. And essentially, he was measuring to see how that wall assembly performed. And again, keywords like moisture content, oriented, oriented strand board, OSB. And essentially, he found it did really well. And then he ran some simulations based on a calibrated model from his field mock-up and his measurements there to see how it would run in other places in Canada. So the website has, like I said, more MRPs and MASCs as well. You see a screenshot here from the website. I urge you to go there and take a peek. Next, I want to talk about the collaborative activity. So you saw, let's see, back at this slide, when we looked at the two degrees, both of them you have to fulfill this pass-fail collaborative activity. So what is that? Well, it's not a course. It's a pass-fail activity. And the idea is this is uh, some text you can read to get an idea of where it came from, why we developed it, where the idea was spawned from. It's 50 hours of collaborative work and it could be in collaboration with an industry partner, it could be in collaboration with other students at Ryerson, other students at other institutions. Here are some examples. Charette design competition, uh, something out in the community, some educational outreach. I want to highlight uh, what we've done through this uh, competition in the United States. The US Department of Energy a race to zero student design competition. Uh, we started this in 2014, the first year I believe that uh, Race to Zero was offered, and we cleaned up the first time. We had an amazing team of graduate building science students and graduate architecture students, both from Ryerson. And basically, I didn't go down, but the students reported back that the judges were floored. We had an amazing integrated design. We had representation for building science and architecture, and it was fantastic. Then after that, we kept putting competitions in, but the other schools saw, hey, that's a good model. And so they modeled it, and so the competition became tough, and we'd, we'd get some awards, but we didn't win the grand prize every year. And it's not all about winning, but it's nice to bring home the hardware. And then this past year, we had another amazing team, and they took the grand prize again with their Lane Zero design. And here are some snapshots to show you what just won 
in 2017. So we're very proud of all our students that do this competition and, and all competitions. Some of the things that I want to highlight, uh, we have a studio space, so we try to commit that every full-time student gets his or her own desk, and all the graduate building science students exist in this building science studio, and that's where they work. And we want you to be here as much as possible. And obviously, you know, it builds friendships and encourages collaborations. And yeah, both MASC and MBSC get their permanent desk while they're full-time tenure here. We try. And we have a building science lab, which is growing at a rapid rate. We have a full-time lab manager coming on board in the summer of 2017. And it's going to support our research, and it's going to support aspects of our teaching, and we're extremely excited about organizing the lab. Other aspects, just some snapshots that have been provided by various grad students. It just shows the camaraderie of the grad students and you know i'll take a, a couple of seconds just to tell you an anecdote right now uh, one of the master students right now who's in the two-year program just saw him the other day and he was uh, kind of sad and right now i'm recording this it's just at the end of june 2017 and i was like why are you sad he's like well you know i made a lot of friends this past eight months all the this first year cohort there's a lot of good friendships and a lot of them are going to graduate in the one-year degree program and he's like, it's sad because they're leaving. And I'm like, well, these, this slide pretty much sums it up. You know, in addition to the pressures of the program and the academic rigor and everything, you make lifelong friends in this program. And you know, when I spoke to that graduate student, that pretty much summed it up for me a couple, a couple of days ago. The other aspects, if you want to look up, if you're new to this idea of building science, please look up these organizations, look up these events, try to go to some if you can. Uh, we have generally a large group in late August of MASC and MRP final presentations. So these students are at the end of their degree and they're defending their MASC thesis or their MRP. If you're interested in coming in the pretty much the last week of August, please email buildingsci at ryerson.ca. We have some in January as well. So if you're watching this, uh, please email and see if you can get the schedule. And there's usually a few in April as well. So January, April, and the big ones at the end of August. And we encourage you to come out and sort of see what the end product looks like. Finally, there's more info on our website, and we encourage you to go there and check it out. If you have any questions, you can email this email as well. You can email me directly. My email is in the beginning of this presentation. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much for listening to this info presentation, and we hope you seriously consider applying to our graduate program. Take care, and we look forward to hearing from you.